Okay, welcome back everybody. Um, I'd like to go over um, setting up and uh, getting ready to animate for the first time using Maya's Human Eye K system. Okay, there are a few uh, preliminary checks that we need to do before we just jump in and start animating. Now this is normally only with the Human IK system, so I'm only focusing this time on the Human IK system. So let's dive right in. Okay, so I, I have the scene set up um, with the character that's been rigged in the Human IK system and he's now ready to animate because I have in fact um, skin weighted the character and you can see that here. Okay, so he's ready to go. Now, what I'd like to mention first off is um, first off, you have to understand um, what are you animating to? Is it 24 FPS? Okay, so if it is 24 FPS, come in here and just make sure that you're not stuck on play every frame. All right, change to 24 FPS. That's for starters. All right. Um, all right. If it is another custom speed, you can change it down here under other. Okay. So we'll set it to 24 FPS. All right. Now the other really important thing um, in terms of animating with human IK system is come up to just under settings. You got animation. Okay. Now by default, you will probably be see the rotation interpolation. Um, you'll see independent Euler angle curves and quaternion cubic. Change the second one because it's got to do with the new human IK curve default. Change that to independent Euler. So it's the same as the top one. Now I'm going to just show you what is the difference. Let's go for quaternion cubic, the original one, the uh, default. Okay, now let's say I have this wrist for example. I'll just come in close to this character's wrist and I'll create a quick little animation. Um, just frame one. I will just keep it um, as is. I'll go to frame 10 and as is. So now we're starting to see the graph editor become populated. Okay. If you're not seeing the graph editor, make sure you change to the animation workspace over here in the top right hand side. Animation. That way you'll set, see the graph editor pop up down the bottom here. And now I'll go to save frame 20 and I'll hit S on my keyboard again. So I'm just hitting S three times. Now I'm going to come back to the center key frame here, the key, and I'm going to rotate it. Here we go. Rotate, 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 and I'll hit S again. Now you'll notice in our graph editor, we've got a rotation in the Y value for the rotate because it's green Y. Let's click on that one. There is the rotation which is created. Now, if I highlight this particular key in here, you'll notice that we don't have any handles. Handles are, for example, here. Here is a handle, okay, for the tangent. These are tangents, tangent handles. Look at that, I can rotate those. So I can adjust the in and out of the curve with these tangents. Okay, now by default, you will have tangents, right? These little arms, the handles for the translates, but you won't see them for the rotates. And that is a problem, okay? Because you can move up and down like this, but if you wanted to move like the translate and actually change the ease in and ease out, you won't be able to. Okay, so how do we fix that? Well, you need at the very start, before you start keying anything, when you first set up your animation, you need to ensure that you've got that set correctly. Remember, in, pre in the preferences, you need to go to animation and change the new HIK curve default so as it's independent Euler. So they're both the same. Okay, that's important. Um, now I'm going to actually just delete um, all of these keys and we'll see what we get. Um, I'll just get rid of all those. So we've got no keys on our timeline. Whoops, so we do. 
Let's have a look. Whoops. Just to confirm, grab that. Oh, get rid of these. Okay, we should have none anymore. Hopefully, let's take a look. There we go. Get rid of those. Delete. Good, back to normal. Right, so now, just to confirm once again, go to Animation, Independent, Independent, Euler. And save that. Make sure you hit save. Now you're in a good position to start animating with the human IK system. So let's um, do a quick anim uh, animation again on the wrist just to make sure. So we will set the um, that control. And by the way, we only key the controls. Okay, um, this is a control. Remember, we don't turn on joints. Here's the joints are now visible. We don't animate the joints themselves. We don't key those themselves. We key the controls. Why is that? Because basically um, you've, you very rarely would actually key a joint. Joints are connected to IK handles and the IK handle is connected to a control. That's what you are keying, the control. This is a control, remember? Okay. Um, if I click these three at the top here, this one here is skeleton, so your joints on and off. So I'll just make those invisible. And this one here is interesting. This is for FK, forward kinematic. So in essence, this is like um, if you do want joint style of animation where you can rotate just those, that's where you do it, okay? And I'll show you that shortly. But I'm going to turn that off for now so we only have controls visible. Here are our controls visible on and off. Okay, that's important. Now, also, while we're on it, along the top here, I'll just go through these. These are quite important. So we know this one here is control visibility, FK visibility, and joint visibility. The next one in line here is full body, which means if I take this and if I hit S on my keyboard down here, I will be pretty well keying everything, all of these controls. These are the controls, the circles inside my user interface here in the human IK. Right? It's another way of selecting them, exactly the same. If I select an empty area here, I'm selecting everything here. I'm selecting both the FK and the jo and the controls. Just be aware of that. Okay. You can select a blank area. Select everything and key all of them. Now, um, the next one down here is body part. So let's go full body and I'm just going to move this wrist so you can see it move. So when I pull this IK handle, sorry, this control, I'm pulling the entire character. See that? It's inversely pulling everything up through here, through the chain, right? Which is a really good way to animate. It's fairly intuitive. So that is full body. Now let's go body part. It's fairly intuitive. It's basically saying, oh, you're only going to animate that body part. You'll only be keying the wrist and this part. Okay, you're only moving that. You're only affecting that. And there's one more which is down here, which is for um, selection. It just lets you select, but you're not necessarily keying anything through that selection. Okay. I very, very rarely use selection. Um, I tend to use these two. Full body. In my first one, pa uh, my first pass of animation, um, I will use full body and then second, third, fourth passes, I start to move into just body parts. Okay. I try not to have full body on all the time later on. I tend to change over to here. If you're suddenly finding, oh, it's not keying everything or it's keying everything, just make sure you have this in control. That's very important. Okay. And then you have um, the next part is these two here, which are for pinning. They look like little thumbtacks or pins. You can pin these controls. So it's like a thumbtack. I'll pin that one. So when I move full body now, that's going to be stuck. It's not going to go anywhere. 
which is really good if you want to lean against a wall or on a desk etc okay notice the rotations not pinned on that wrist let's pin the rotate value as well make sure you got it selected by the way pin it now both rotation and translates are pinned okay um, so you'll notice here that the feet are both already pinned by default hence I can move this character's um, waist control up and down and he's pinned all right you also notice you'll see a T for translate and R for rotate really close up so translate and rotate are pinned if I unpin one of them like the rotate you'll see it disappear only translate okay good okay great let's try a little bit of animation just to show you the process um, and then I'm going to move on to a little bit more advanced um, yeah, areas and show you what this human IK is actually capable of um, so I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to move this hand down a little bit I'm going to get him into his first pose make sure you're on your first frame get him into position and I will just bring this hand down by his side let's say that's the first pose okay nothing special so I want to key all of it so I'm going to go all and I hit S and I see a vertical line red line which denotes as a keyframe now if I were to check these ones you'll notice if I click any of these others it's also keyed okay because I'm seeing a red vertical line why is everything keyed because I've, have, I've got it on full body part okay let's go and do change to say frame 5 and now I'm going to do just body part let's change full body to body part I'm going to move this arm up and I'm going to hit S there we go this one here is moving up great and if I go onto another control they are not keyed do you notice that there's no frame here all right so it's independent I'm now working independent okay so what does this mean well it's really good for you to set your key poses with full body that way there's a key on all your main body parts here okay just keep in mind that it is also going to be keying the um, the forearm so these are the FK's right it'll be keying these as well that's okay just be aware of that these little long lines here look like the bones they're for FK when you want to select FK just think of FK like um, let's say you have a puppet like Pinocchio and you want to rotate each individual body part okay that's what you're doing there forward kinematics so let's get back into it right so we've created a little animation you're fairly happy with it um, straight up here all right um, it could be a walk cycle maybe I want to now fix this animation and we'll go from scratch so I'll just if I hold shift on my timeline I want to delete this key I hold shift and I can drag see that oh, I'm holding shift and my left mouse button right click and go delete that deletes a key I could have alternatively come into my gra graph editor over here and marquee selected those keys there and hit delete that also deletes them right let's have a look at these ones yep but I've still got keys on those others come to that one see that they're still there so grab those delete uh -huh. all right just be aware of that they've gone from this one but they're still on that one so how can I get rid of all of them you need to select here in a blank spot come in by the way I'm holding alt and I'm right mouse button dragging to zoom in and out and grab all of those hit delete and I now know it's deleted everything all right so you need to play around with that a little bit um, those are the basics of animating with the human IK now um, let's say I wanted to start off with a walk cycle I might have the um, left foot forward put him into a pose like this okay 
I'm going to bring the slightly forward like that other arm back a little bit All right this one here oh actually sorry if that one's forward this one here will be back left hand will be back be the opposite won't it this one forward make sure I'm in full body because this is my first pose it might be back I also like to position the root first the hips because everything should emanate out through the hips when you animate I won't move the hand so much okay that'll do for now this will be my first pose I'm on frame one I will key everything so I'm gonna hit I've got everything selected here S great let's go to save frame 32 um, um, actually if I go in we'll go to 24s we'll go on 12s and 6s right so I'll just bring this down to 24 make it a bit easier I'll go 25 just so we've got a gap there 24 should be the opposite so for now oh sorry not the opposite it's going to be identical this should be a mirror because it's restarting so okay how do I do that well I want to select all of my controls to select all the controls once again you click this remember and if I shift left mouse click okay I can then if I want to drag all of that but I don't want to do that what I want to do is just make it really simple just middle mouse drag 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 frame 1 all the way to 24 all I've done is middle mouse push and drag and then hit S that's just duplicated so that's a little tip there by holding middle mouse push it down on any of the keyframe you can duplicate it by bringing it up and then hitting S okay alternatively you could hit let's say if I had extra frames in here I can hold shift left drag now I'm selecting everything and I can move everything with my middle mouse see that I've just moved those frames I don't want to do that all I'm interested in is just duplicating and I have it's now duplicated it I'm just middle mouse scrolling out here 24 frames it's flat it's duplicated all right let's go to frame 18 oh sorry 9 sorry 12 half 24 is 12 hello and we're going to do the opposite so I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to eyeball this one quickly and I'll just rotate that up I'm going to grab the other foot now and bring that one back Is it okay? Like uh, that. Let's now bring this hand forward, and the other hand grabbing the other control in here. And notice I'm still full body. It's okay. I'm still full body. Just check it out. I make sure I'm not going too far. This one here. I like to have it further in a little bit. I can fix all these later remember um, there we go now full body I'm going to hit S so there we go okay that's the start of the walk cycle now I'd go to half a 12 or 6 and I'll do the in-betweens so remember this is my first pass of animation frame 6 and then this is the in-between so I would actually raise this guy up now let me just check which foot was coming forward again it was the right foot forward okay so bring them up right foot forward will be off the ground and slightly bent like that and the other one will be on the ground make sure it is on the ground on the ground yeah, down a little bit hand should be down by their sides coming through following through so I don't like about that this one here is starting to come through this one's starting to drift back a little bit okay I'm going to rotate this wrist a little bit forward because the, mem the mem momentum is going back so we'll have the overlap 
there and this one here is moving forward so bring that out a little bit that one around it's coming forward okay so let's key it again we'll hit s there we go it's coming through and forward great and then we'll go to 18 and we'll do the opposite so we'll come up again up 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 like that try and avoid locking knees okay have a little slight bit of a bend in it this one will be now flat see that's totally locked so let's bring that down a bit oh, that's better lift this foot up because this is the passer this is passing through a bit extreme there let's bring those wrists back down bring them out a bit maybe even flare it out a little bit too okay by the way while I'm just positioning this guy I want to mention um, other aspects of animation sometimes you might be animating and you'll find as you're moving from one key pose to another you might suddenly see a flipping action suddenly go and flip like this all right flip 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 okay it's suddenly popping they call it um, or flipping suddenly pops your animation will pop this is often caused by what's called a gimbal lock okay a gimbal lock and I'll explain that to you shortly so I'm ready to um, will, I'm just a little bit further a gimbal lock is not very nice especially when you don't know what it is and you can wrestle with it for a very long time it's not much fun so let me just show you an example of a gimbal lock so look there's that animation by the way it's starting to take shape and it's doing all right um, let's say we have a cube and over here so when I normally rotate everything rotates fine and you notice when I rotate around the blue axis see the blue and the green blue around my Z it rotates and you'll notice the green one also rotates with the blue watch it again I'll grab the blue it was blue see the blue once I highlight it turns yellow so I'm gonna rotate around the blue and watch that green axis see how it moves with it okay now watch what happens if I change my rotation settings from orientation the orientation settings from object to gimbal watch this if I rotate that one's okay oh it's okay that one let's try this one. Oh, see the blue and the red the blue and the red watch them the blue is not rotating with it this is what you call a gimbal lock when these two meet or it goes past it and that is the flipping that you'll be seeing it's a gimbal lock bang right there the blue and the red right the blues not rotating with it so by default when it rotates you're not actually seeing this but um, you are in fact rotating in gimbal mode okay local and world um, rotation there and add on to it okay you're actually rotating by gimbal but Maya is doing calculations for you in the background to make it easier for you okay so sometimes if you get a gimbal lock that's what it is that's what you'll be seeing okay now I'm rotating right now in object mode as I stated just makes it easier what happens now see they go together just makes it easier for you doesn't it so I just wanted to bring that up gimbal lock can be a real headache if you do come across it but if you do it can be easily or if you're lucky fingers crossed it can be fixed and if you do come across it maybe say around here maybe around here I might between these two frames 6 and 12 let's say this suddenly freaked out like this it was just going crazy like that all right was flipping out but you weren't actually seeing any keys here there was nothing there to show it it was just flipping all of a sudden well let's say that was that flipping action and you're going well how on earth can I fix that what the heck well what you need to do is select the 
area where it's or the control that is problematic or even a couple of controls marquee select that particular area and if you come up to I think it's curves um, oiler filter we're looking for um, there it is oiler filter so curves and then click oiler filter and if you're lucky that'll clean it up for you that's a big tip okay that'll save you okay just be aware of that okay let's carry on so we're now animating everything's working pretty fine you're really happy with it um, you've gone through your first pass you know you might now move in and start doing what are called the foot slaps you know you're starting to go into your second pass now and you want this to not roll through like this like that you want it to slap on the ground about here you want that to slap well you probably don't want to key all the other all the other controls so time to move over into body part slap it down and hit s I'm only keying that one body part okay the foot here we are down here so it's slap slap it's a lot better okay I'll do the same for the other foot too so you guys can see that I'll go to frame one maybe two and I'll slap that one and I know I'm in body part half body I'll call it half body body part and that's going to slap cool I'm probably in a good position now to actually select this one and if I go into my translates for example translate Y translate Z translate X and you can start to go through them in here on the left side right so here it's just flat 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 and then it starts to rise here okay notice that it's starting to rise up and we can see it in our graph editor too it's rising up now and it goes up 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 and then it's starting to come forward and down 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 maybe you don't want it to come down so slowly here you want it to stay flat flat lining if you do here's how you could have the same value here onto this key here how do you do that over here you on the left hand side you got stats here the first one is your frame that you're on we've got selected frame 18 see that okay we're keyed on frame 18 18 well let's click this one now we're on 12 this is the value if I copy that control C and go to 18 and go control V and then enter there you go these are now exactly the same value as a good tip okay see that okay what else if I actually wanted to roll over well I could marquee select both of these and then marquee select both of the handles the tangents see that and then middle mouse up and down look at that now I'm only seeing the movement here because the fact is I'm on that frame if this timeline was over here I wouldn't necessarily be seeing it see that you need to be in the area where you're doing the effect there okay all right now you can lock tangents up here um, you can do all sorts of stuff along the top here you can break tangents you can they're along the top here okay you can play around with those you got post pre infinity in here if you want to cycle looping okay just gotta play around with that you can also scale with these tools here if you're interested you can scale entire lengths of keys by clicking um, there's a whole bunch of them. retime tool okay it's worth playing around with some of those flat line you can turn them into stepped here um, where step mode there now they're stepped okay I'm going to go back to auto there okay that's a quick overview of the graph editor um, yeah okay I won't go too much deeper than that but I'm holding alt right click to zoom in and out left click drag to change my time along to s slide and scroll through time along here 
okay and then I click and if I hold sh uh, middle mouse drag it just moves its per perpendicular straight up and down ver vertically okay it's going to pop to each one if I hold shift it keeps it just in line shift and middle mouse dragging I am okay good okay so look that's a very brief overview of the human IK system now I want to move on and show you a little bit more detail in terms of using this system um, a little bit more advanced so for example let's say I have this character actually I'm just going to reopen this so I'll get rid of that animation um, just to show you so we're back better make sure it's set to independent 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 yes it is good and I'm on 24 yes I am great let's talk about other um, controls that we can use in here let's say my character um, he was standing here and he was interested in maybe um, whoops let's say he was a drummer in a rock and roll band all right and he was sitting on his drum seat just doing his thing waiting for the gig to start yeah chilling out doing his thing cool there he is well let's create a drumstick well first he needs a drum there's your drum not the greatest drum but it's a drum okay and We'll flatten it. He might be in a Calippo band. Calypso is it? There we go. All right, we need a drumstick. Command D. Um, here we go. I'm just going to pull this out a bit. Scale it down a bit. There we go. That'll do. Cool. Let's rotate that stick into position. So let's say the stick was just there. Just for the purpose of this exercise. Um, freezer transforms. Good. So here's our drumstick. And we want this character to interact with the drumstick. Well, what we can do, of course, we could animate the hand coming up and then put it, you know, approximately where it's supposed to grab the stick and um, well, things get a bit difficult now because we want to move the stick up and start playing the drum and we have to make the hand meet that as well. Well, oh, that makes things really, really, really difficult and you're really going to take a while. It's going to be some crazy manual method. I'm just moving the pivot point of this drum stick right now, just up to about here, just so I can rotate it you know bang 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 sort of a thing later on so let's think about that here he is he's in his first key pose but what we want to do is have a control already attached to this so what do we use we use what's called an auxiliary effector to create an auxiliary effector is really simple um, if I right click on his right hand this one and you can go create auxiliary effector there it is that's an auxiliary effector and if I pick, click the little plus button here it opens it up hides it okay we want to move the auxiliary effector so it's already attached to our drumstick so I'm just going to turn this one off and I'm going to just move this down see how we've got these IK blends under here Watch what happens when I pull one down. See, it's now the translates off, blend T, blend R. Let's turn both of those off, which means now this one here is the one that is controlling everything. See that? All right. Okay, so I'm going to put it into place. By the way, I believe I can turn this one on. See, this one here has preference because it's in line in the chain. So I can still move this one. I'm just going to put it into position, but I'd like to... Oh, actually, I've got them both on now. If I turn this one off, see? If I turn this one off, I'm just sliding these off. Now, this one is uh, on. 
See, I just turned those ones off, sorry. These ones are off. The auxiliary effect is off. They're gray, and this one is on. This one has preference. There you go, see that? All right, so just for now, I'm gonna turn this one off. I'm gonna turn the other on, just so as I can position the hand properly. Just to get it into position when I'm ready to bang that drumstick, bang the drum, sorry. I'm gonna rotate it a bit. Okay, so for the purposes of this exercise, I think that'll about do for now. I'm just gonna move it over a little bit. Something like that, okay? All right, it's in position. Let's turn this one off and this one back on. Okay, so we know it's in position, great. So what can we do here? Well, one, we need to start keying our animation and then we're gonna key the translate over to this one but first we need to um, constrain this auxiliary effector to the drumstick so you can do that in your outliner hit F auxiliary effector there it is and I said I wanted to parent it not just parent I want to constrain it to my drumstick I better call this drumstick there we go, it makes it easier. So, remember, constraints, we select them in the opposite order. It's not just a normal parenting. Opposite order. So I'm going to grab that um, auxiliary effector now. Uh, where is it, actually? There it is there. So I'll grab the drumstick, and then select that one. And I'm going to go constrain, do a parent constraint. And I'm also going to do a um, orient constraint. Okay. Cool. Okay, let's see how we go. So now, if I just grab the drumstick, it moves with it. Fantastic. Cool. So, all right. So I'm busy here. He's doing his own thing. Um, remember, the auxiliary effect is turned off. All right. So I'm going to come over here, and just for now, I'm going to key these the blends. Right click, set key. Right click, set key. So they are keyed. Now I'm just going to do my little animation as I no normally do. This guy might be doing his own thing. He might be sitting here, um, waving to the crowd maybe. He might put his hand up. Hey everybody, what's up? We are the alien nation. Yeah, he might bob his head a little bit. Okay. Might even lift this hand up a little bit now. Notice how we've keyed these ones already. The other hand, because we're in full body. This one here might lift up a little bit too. Okay. We'll key everything. Full body. Just hit S. Good. Whee, like that. Okay. These are key poses. Um, Alright. And then later on, you know, a couple of frames later, he comes back down. I know it's very quick, very quick animation. Maybe it comes back down to here a little bit. Oh, we'll just come to about here. And he's getting ready to pick up the drumstick. All right, so he's going to start looking down at it too, looking towards it. All right, let's key everything. Okay, now we're going to flip over. Now we're going to flip over to the other mode. So what do we do here? So um, I'm going to flip over to body part. And I'm going to now do the transition. So one, we're going to start to move across. So I want to do one key here. Set key. Set key. Right. And then I'll also do one key here. Set key. Set key on this one. Now we want to do the transition. The transition is from here to maybe over four frames, five frames, and we're going to first transition to one, and one, right click, set key, set key, and transition from this one to zero, set key to zero, set key, 
No. Now we should be in a pretty good position to be able to move just this. And there we go. So next up, I would start the action of the drumming. Whoops. Oh, looks like I forgot to bring up one of the uh, one of these ones. Sorry. Uh, where were we again? We were on frame. Boom. There. Okay. This one up as well. Set key. Okay. So I can now grab the drumstick, and I could be actively just animating only the drumstick. That's all I need to animate. And watch this. Bring the drumstick up. I can position it. Okay. Getting ready. Hit S. Just all I'm animating now is the drumstick. And by the way, clicking on now auxiliary effector, the IK pull is really important too. If I key that, you can see it actually moves the body in. So I'll go about halfway. We'll start playing with some IK pull as well. So maybe from there to there, he might slam down. Whoops, not that. We don't want to key this. We're keying our drumstick, remember? So and then you'd rotate it. Okay, bam. Straight back. Whoops. Bam. And go back. And then pull one more. A little bit wonky. I'm doing this extremely quickly. I could even rotate that more. Smack. Okay. I won't keep animation because I'm just taking time here. But there we go. Bang, bang. And all I'm animating here is the drumstick. I'm not even touching my character at all right now. Okay. Just be aware of that. That's the beauty of this human IK. Look at that. Bang, bang. And it's all taking place inside here. And I've keyed these ones here. The IK blends and the pull if I want to pull the character's body into it. Okay. Um... And if I want to turn these off, or if I want to add another one, I could easily just come into here and right click and go create another auxiliary effector. Now I've got two of them. I could have multiple. Right click, create auxiliary effector on auxiliary effectors. Turn these ones off actually. See? Whichever one you're working with at the time, turn the others off. So I'm just working with this one which was on the drumstick, remember? So, and then turn them all off, I'd be eventually going. So, you know, he could be a, um, a busker with those playing cups in the street, three cups and a coin under it or a ping pong ball, whatever it be. Each of these might be attached to one of those cups, right? And those cups are moving around, etc. Get the idea? Okay, so those are auxiliary effectors. I can right click, clear, clear extra effectors all gone now I'm back to normal okay you've also got what are called right click a pivot effector a pivot effector is really really good in terms of um, let me just grab it you can move a pivot effector um, for if you want the heel roll etc you just want the heel to be rolling you could use pivot effectors all right there another one um, now, one last thing, I'm going to reset this. So, I've got this motion capture file here of a character going through a few dance moves. Here we go. Yep. And it's as simple as changing your source to the mocap. Right? So, I could hide this guy. all of that and check it out so you can see how powerful the human IK system is out of the box that's just a very brief introduction to the human IK system it can do an awful lot more um, I just wanted to you know 
get you up and running with it so you feel comfortable. Um, hopefully that helps and I look forward to catching up with you in class. Okay, bye-bye.